All right, review for the unit six test. So simplify and state restrictions. Now remember, you always wanna state your restrictions before you do any canceling. So remember, cancel last. All right. So in this case, whenever you have letters in the bottom, like X and Y, right off the bat, you can easily just say X can't be zero, Y can't be zero. If you don't have any binomials, and you just have letters, just say those letters can't be zero. Doesn't matter what the exponent is, it's just X and Y can't be zero. All right, now, take your time. Worry about the sign, then the number, then the variable. Okay, don't try to do too much at once. So first off, this is gonna be a negative fraction because it's negative on the outside. You can put the negative top, bottom, or outside, doesn't matter. Now, 12 and 48, one number goes into both. Well, if you know your times tables, you know 12 goes into 48 four times. But maybe you don't, and maybe you just see six. That's fine, it doesn't always have to be the biggest one, it's just more convenient and faster. But you might say six goes into 12 two times, and six goes into 48 eight times. And then you might see, oh, 2 and 8 reduced to 1 and 4. The 1 is not necessary unless all the letters disappear, but doesn't hurt to put it there. Now, with my letters, two simple questions. Where do I have more letters and how many? So with my X's, all I've got is 9 on the bottom. Simple enough. With my Y's, where do I have more Y's? Up top. So I put a Y there. How many more? Two more. And that's it. I guess I was supposed to write the restrictions down here. Sorry. All right. Now, for number two, we have to factor the top and bottom first. Now, these factorings in this unit are not hard because it's not the goal of this unit. It's just a tool. So they're all pretty simple ones. So in number two, I need two numbers that multiply to give me 20 that are going to add to 9. Well, that's four and five. Now, since this is positive, that means they're both positive or both negative. Since the nine is negative, that means it's x minus four, x minus five. On the bottom, I need two numbers that multiply to give me 15 that differ by two. Well, that's gonna be five and three. Now, since I have more negatives left over, I want the negative five and the positive three. Now, don't cancel. It's very common to cancel this and go, oh, x plus 3 equals 0. x cannot be negative 3. And move on and be wrong. You have to do the canceling last. x also cannot be 5. Now, we can cancel and say our final answer is x minus 4 over x plus 3. Right? Simple factoring here. Two numbers that multiply give me 20 that differ by one. Well, that's five and four. I want more positives than negatives, so I have five minus four to give me one X in the middle. On the bottom, I need two numbers that multiply give me 30 that add or combine to 11. That's six and five, and they're both gonna be positive. Again, do your restrictions first. X cannot be negative five, and X cannot be negative six. And remember, I get those by setting both of these equal to zero. Now, I cancel my X plus fives, leaving me X minus four over X plus six. Now remember, it's very tempting, people often will scratch out the four and six, and say, oh, two and three. You can't do that. You cannot cancel across a plus or minus. If it helps, put them in parentheses and think of it as a force field. And nothing can get in there and break it up. All right, first off for this one, I'm going to rewrite this as negative x squared minus 4x plus 12. I'm going to put it in descending order. Okay? Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the negative 1 out. It's always easier to factor x squared. So that's going to make the x squared positive, the 4x positive, and the 12 negative. 
Now the bottom, I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and do this because it's very easy factoring x minus six x plus six. My next step is to factor the top. Don't forget the negative one here. So I need two numbers that multiply give me twelve that differ by four. That's going to be six and two. Since I want more positives, whoops, that was to be a negative two, like so. And I have the x plus six, x minus six on the bottom. All right, now don't cancel yet. Set these both equal to zero. Since it's both six, if you wanted to, you could say this, x cannot be plus or minus six. Or you could say separately, x cannot be positive 6, x cannot be negative 6. Either one's fine. Last thing is to cancel my x plus 6, which leaves me, don't forget the negative 1. If you just want to put a negative, you can. x minus 2 over x minus 6. And that's it. Can't cancel the x's, can't, can't reduce the 2 and the 6. You cannot do that across a plus or minus sign. All right, number five, you cannot do any guess and check factoring, but you can take out a GCF. So I'm going to take out a 2 from the 2 and 6, and x squared from the x cubed and x squared. So that's going to give me x minus 1. I don't know why I wrote a 6. Nope, and it's not even a 1. Definitely didn't want to do that either. Let's put my brain on. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Okay. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. x cubed divided by x squared is x. And negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. And the x squared is cancel. Now on the bottom, I'm going to take out a 6x squared. And then I'm going to get x squared plus 6x minus 6 times 12 is 72. Okay. Then this, you can rewrite the whole thing, or if you want to, you can just come underneath and say this has got to be x and x. Two numbers that multiply to give me 12 that differ by 6. Not six, that's silly. It's one. That should not be there. Or maybe I just did a sloppy one. I don't know. I don't remember if I said six or not. My mistake. Six divided by six is one. So it's one x squared plus one x minus twelve. So that's much easier because that's four and three. Since I want more positives, that means I got negative three here. Now if I want to, I can cross this out because I've replaced it with x plus four x minus three. Now, before I do any canceling, I need to do my restrictions. For this, x cannot be 0. For the x plus 4, x cannot be negative 4. And for the x minus 3, x cannot be 3. Now the fun begins. I can cancel the x minus 3s. I can cancel the x squareds. 2 reduces this to 1 and 3. And I think I'm done. So on the bottom, I still have a 3. Be careful. Make sure you double check everything. And I have an x plus 4. You do not need to distribute. Just leave it like that. Notice how everything cancels on the top. You can't leave it blank, so you put a 1 there. And that's your answer. That's it. All right. On this next one, I'm going to first rewrite this again as x squared plus 4. All right? Then I'm actually going to take out the negative and make it x squared minus 4, which is much nicer to, to do because it's a difference of squares. Okay? So now I'm ready to factor. So on the top, I need two numbers that multiply give me 6 that differ by 1. That's 3 and 2. I need more positives than negatives. On the bottom, don't forget this negative 1 out here. And there's a simple square root, square root, 1 positive, 1 negative. 
Again, do not cancel before you say X cannot be positive 2 and X cannot be negative 2. Again, if you wanted to, you could write it like this. Now the fun begins. I cancel the X minus 2s. That leaves an X plus 3 on the top. A negative 1 on the bottom, or just a negative sign, depending on how you want to write it. X plus 2 on the bottom or the denominator. That's it. This was just the restrictions from the previous page. I don't know why I printed that way. Number seven. If these were the denominators, what would be the common denominator? So, you know, if you want to, you could pretend that there's, a, you know, a one here and a three here. That's all it's saying. It's saying if you have these two fractions, what would the, the common denominator be? So either way, you're going to start by factoring. So again, simple factoring. I need two numbers that multiply, give me 40, that differ by 3. That's 8 and 5. Since I want more leftovers, that is positive and that's negative. And I wrote a positive anyway. All right. Now the n, Q, n squared minus 25 is simple. That's n plus 5 and n minus 5. Difference of squares. 1 plus, 1 minus. Now, the first fraction has an n plus 8, n minus 5. The second fraction has n plus 5, n minus 5. They both have an n minus 5, so we're good to go. But one of them has an n plus 8, and one of them has an n plus 5 which means we need all three of those for the common denominator. All right? Number eight, same concept. Factor them. I need two numbers that multiply, give me 20, that add to nine. That's five and four. Since this is negative, they're both negative. Over here, this is a simple difference of squares. So n, n, four, four, 1 plus, 1 minus. LCD. They both have an n minus 4. One of them has an n minus 5, so we need to, we'll need to adjust that. And one of them has an n plus 4. I need one of each to have a common denominator. Remember, if you need to, hit pause, slow down, rewind. You're in control of this. All right. Simplify completely and state restrictions. All right. So there's lots going on here. So the first one I'm going to simplify. Uh, but first, on this one, I'm going to rewrite it again. Negative x squared plus 5x plus 24. I'm going to do that first. Okay. Then I'm going to start... Factoring. So n squared minus 16. Again, that's a simple difference of squares. So square root of 9, square root of x squared, square root of 16. 1 plus, 1 minus. That just looks horrible. The more I try to fix it, the worse it gets. All right. Over x minus 8 squared, I'm going to write those separately in case one of them can cancel. Over here, I'm going to take the negative 1 out, okay? And to save time, I'm going to actually do that up here so I can factor right away and not have to rewrite all this stuff twice. So that's going to be x squared minus 5x minus 24. So that means I need two numbers that multiply to give me 24 that differ by 5. So that's 8 and 3. Since I want more negatives, x minus 8, x plus 3. And there's my x minus 8 that's going to cancel. And I say going to because we're not there yet. We must state our restrictions. All right? 
So x minus 8 squared, we don't have to do it twice. Simply, x cannot be 8. Now, for the 3x plus 4, you might need to do that. You can do that in your head, or you might need to do this real quickly. So 3x equals negative 4. When we divide by 3, x cannot be negative 3 fourths. Now, let the fun begin. So I have a 3x plus 4 here, which is going to cancel with 3x plus 4 there. I have an x minus 8 on the bottom with an x minus 8 on the top. So what does that leave me? Well, I have a 3x minus 4 on the top. I have a negative 1, which I'm going to put out here. And then I have an x plus 3. Over what's left in the bottom, just x minus 8. That's my final simplified problem. All right. Start factoring. So on the top left, I need two numbers that multiply give me seven. Pretty easy. The difference by six. There's only one choice, seven and one. Since I want more positives, that makes a seven positive and the neg one negative. On the bottom left, I need two numbers that multiply give me 42 that add to 13. Well, that's 6 and 7, and they're both positive. Right here. On the upper right, I need two numbers that multiply give me 6 that add to 7. Well, that's going to be 6 and 1, and since this is positive, they're both positive. And then the simplest of all, x plus 1, x minus 1, difference of squares. Again, don't start canceling yet. Set each thing on the bottom equal to 0. So x plus 6 equals 0. Remember, that is a plus. It means x cannot be negative 6. x plus 7, x cannot be negative 7 x plus 1, x cannot be negative 1, x minus 1, x can also not be positive 1. And again, if you wanted to, you could have written this like this. Now let the fun begin. x plus 1's cancel. x plus 6, cancel. x plus 7's, cancel. x minus 1's, cancel. Everything cancels. What's my answer? One. Just one. That's it. All right, we have two division problems here. The first one is classic division problem. Number 13 is a complex question, complex fraction, sorry. That is basically just a division problem. So, you have two choices here. I like to personally just do this and flip it right now. And just kind of do that and get that out of the way. That's my personal choice. All right? If you want to rewrite the whole thing and change your multiplication problem, that's fine also. I just try to save some time and space. Now, on the top left, I'm going to factor. I need two numbers that multiply give me 12 to add up to 7. So that's x plus 4 and x plus 3. They're both plus because the 7 is positive. Difference of squares over here, easiest factoring in the world. Square root, square root, 1 plus, 1 minus. x minus 4, x plus 5, which we already had. Now remember, it's also important to flip first because now we're going to get negative, x can't be negative 5 as an answer. If we didn't flip it, we wouldn't get that answer. And then 4, negative 4. So again, you can write it separately or like this. It's up to you. Now, let the games begin. x minus 4 is cancel. x plus 4 is cancel, leaving me only x plus 3 over x plus 5. Final answer. Now, remember how I said number 13 is just a division problem? It is. It's literally just like number 12. 
just written in a different way. This right here is just a, the division symbol. And there should be, that, that's missing for some reason. I hope it's on your paper. Looks like it is. I think there's just a printing error here. Now, I'm running out of space because that one thing skipped the page, so you should have more space on your paper. Now, I'm going to flip the second one, and I'm also going to be factoring as I go along. So the top left is just x minus 6, and the bottom left, I'm going to factor out an 8, GCF of 8, so x minus 2. Now, I'm going to flip this and move the 4x minus 8 up top. Now, if you want to, if you need to flip first, then factor, I'm just going to move it up and factor at the same time. Again, if you needed to, you could do this. You know, like so, and then come down here and factor. It's up to you. So 2x squared minus 12x. 2 is the greatest common factor of 2 and 12. x is the greatest common factor of x squared and x. I'm going to divide. 2 divided by 2 is 1. x squared divided by x is x. 12 divided by 2 is 6, and the x is canceled. Now remember, restrictions. x cannot be 6. X cannot be 2. And with this X right here, we just know X cannot be 0. Now we get to start having fun. The X minus 2's cancel. The X minus 6 is cancel. What's left? Well, I can do 2 into 4 or 4 into 8. It doesn't matter, but I do want to do it one way to show you something. This 4 can go into this 8 twice. Those twos do not cancel because you can't cancel side to side. So what's left on top? Simply a one. Two times two is four. And don't forget the X. Final answer. There's the restrictions we were looking for. All right, number 14. Okay, a lot going on here. It's a division problem again, and there's factoring. I'm just going to, right here, do this. I'm going to move the x squared plus 2x minus 63 there, and then move the x squared minus 4x minus 21 down. Again, you if you want to rewrite everything and do it that way, that's fine also. Now, just to start factoring. Top left, I need two numbers that multiply, give me three, that's easy, it's got to be three and one, that differ by two, obviously, and I want two positives left over, so positive, negative. Bottom left, I need two numbers that multiply, give me nine, that differ by eight. Well, that's going to be nine and one, since I want more positives left over than negative one is there. All right, upper right. I need two numbers that multiply, give me 63, that differ by 2. Well, that's 9 and 7. I want more leftovers, two positive leftovers, so the 7 is negative. Bottom right, two numbers that multiply, give me 21, that differ by 4, that's 7 and 3. I want more negatives left over, so it looks like that. Remember to do the restrictions before you cancel. So x plus 9 tells me it can't be negative 9. x minus 1 tells me it cannot be positive 1. x minus 7 tells me it cannot be positive 7. And x plus 3 tells me it cannot be negative 3. Now the fun begins. Cancel. 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 And look what happens again. Cancel, giving me just one. Everything cancels. Moving on. Now, this is, please notice, this is a subtraction problem. 
not a multiplication problem, okay? Different vibe, different method. So pay attention to what's going on here. We've talked about this before, okay, with polynomials and people having a subtraction problem and then distributing and multiplying when you shouldn't. Pay attention to the symbols, please. Know what you're doing, okay? So here we go. We need to factor the bottom. So on this one, you know what? I don't have, I have enough space. So I'm just gonna rewrite so I actually can not have to crunch it in. So I'm gonna have x minus nine on the top. And over here, I'm gonna have two parentheses, okay? Two numbers that multiply give me 12 that add to one, seven, sorry, add to seven. That's gonna be six and one, both positive, because the seven's positive. Now, whenever you have a subtraction problem, I highly suggest you turn it into an addition problem and put the negative up there with that. That way, whenever there's any uh, multiplication, you make sure you distribute a negative number. All right? Personal choice. On the bottom right, two numbers that multiply give me 18 that add to 9. That's going to be 6 and 3, both positive. All right, now we want, this is where we, the practicing with the LCD comes in earlier. Remember those problems said, hey, if you have a fraction, these are the denominators. That's what this is for. When you're adding or subtracting fractions, just like one half and two thirds, you need a common denominator. So I need an X plus six, an X plus one. I already have another x plus 6 over here, so I don't need to write that a second time. They both have one. They're good there. And x plus 3. Okay, that's my common denominator. Okay, hopefully you've already caught my really bad mistake over here. I don't know what was going on in my brain. Two numbers that multiply give me 12 that add up to 7. 6 plus 1 adds up to 7, but 6 times 1 is not 12. I apologize for that. Hopefully, a bunch of you were yelling at me and caught it. So, it's 4 and 3. So, well, how did that change my LCDs? Well, my LCDs are, this time now, they both have an X plus 3. Same concept here. And then I need a positive 4 and a positive 6, like that. My mistake. Right off the bat, before I do anything else, I'm going to state my restrictions. X can't be negative 3. X can't be negative 4. X can't be negative 6. All right. Now, this is my shopping list. My left fraction has the X plus 4, X plus 3. It still needs an X plus 6. So I need to multiply. I need an X plus 6 here. Well, if I do that to the denominator, I've got to do that to the top. And over here in the second fraction, I have x plus 6, x plus 3, but no x plus 4. All right. So now I am going to work this out. My denominator, we already know what it's going to be. X plus 3, X plus 4, X plus 6. On the left, I need to FOIL or double distribute the X squared, X plus 6, X minus 9. I'm going to skip the middle step and do it in my head. X times X is X squared. My outer and inner is going to be negative 9X plus 6X. That's negative 3X. And then my last is minus 54. Now, the reason I said before about changing the subtraction is to remember to make sure you distribute a negative 3x, 3 to the x, and a negative 3 to the 4. And now my last step is just to clean it up. So the denominator, again, does not change. So the x squared is by itself. Negative 3x minus 3x is negative 6x, and minus 54 minus 12. You borrow $54, you borrow 12 more dollars, you owe $66. And that's my answer. Okay? 
Next one. This one simply is x plus 7, x minus 7. I really have nothing else left to do. It's already factored. I'm going to turn that into plus a negative 4. I'm going to identify my LCD, which is simply going to be x plus 7, x minus 7. I'm going to immediately go to my restrictions and say x cannot be plus or minus 7. Again, you can write them separately if you want. Now I go shopping. The first parentheses is already okay. So all I need to do is give this one an x plus 7 top and bottom. So what does it give me? Well, on the bottom, nothing changes. x plus 7, x minus 7. Top left is simply 5x minus 3. There was nothing else to do there. And then I need to distribute a negative 4. Be careful there. So negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Negative 4 times 7 is negative 28. And now I'm just going to clean it up. So 5x minus 4x is just 1x. Minus 28 minus 3 is minus 31 over x plus 7, x minus 7. Finito. Okay, I believe 17 on yours in the packet is on the same page. Sorry. All right, immediately I'm going to change this to plus a negative 7. I'm going to factor right here, x and x. Two numbers that give me 15 that differ by 2. That's 5 and 3. I need more negatives than positives. Clean that up a bit. Over here, two numbers that multiply give me 20 that differ by 1, 5, and 4. I want more negatives than positives. Now my LCD. They both have an x minus 5, so that's good. One has an x plus 3. One has an x plus 4. That's what they all need to be in common. My restrictions are based on the LCD. x cannot be positive 5 x cannot be negative 3, and x cannot be negative 4. That's from setting all those equal to 0. So, what does the first fraction need? It needs the x plus 4. What does the second fraction need? Well, it needs the x plus 3. All right. My denominator is not changing. On the top, I have 9 times x and 9 times 4. I also have negative 7 times x and negative 7 times 3. Now, I just clean it up. 9x minus 7x is 2x. 36 minus 21 is positive 15. And for the last time, my LCD is my denominator. And that is complete. Here we go. Solve and write restrictions. Okay, so if you remember from the lesson, the goal is to find the least common denominator, least common multiple in the denominator, which we've been doing for a while now. So the LCD or the LCM, doesn't matter what you call it, is going to be x squared, okay? x, x squared, and x squared all go into x squared. And what we're going to do is multiply every single fraction by x squared. And the reason we're doing this is we're trying to get rid of the denominators. Okay? Now, on the first one, 6 over x squared, the x squared is completely canceled. So that leaves me 6. Minus. I have the 8, but think about it. I have x squared over x. Okay? That means only one of them cancel. I still have an x left. Be careful with that. 
equals here 12 because the x squared is canceled. I'm sorry, I did forget with all those x's on the bottom, x can't be 0. Now we're just back to a simple uh, two-step equation. Minus 6 on both sides gives me negative x equals 6. Divide by negative 8, I get 6 over negative 8, which reduces, always reduce, negative 3 fourths. All right? Remember on this one, this is a 1 there, okay? Now, my LCD is going to be the y plus 8, y plus 2. So I'm going to multiply everything times y plus 8, y plus 2. That's for the first one. That's for the second one. That's for the third one. It's hard to do this in a cramped space. Okay, on the first fraction, the y plus 8s are going to cancel. What you're going to leave me, don't forget this y here, y times y plus 2. On the second fraction, the y plus 2s are going to cancel. Sorry, that's, I canceled the wrong one there. Leaving the y plus 8. Okay, so be careful. Remember, you still have that y there on top. So that's y times y plus 8 equals nothing cancels y plus 8, y plus 2. Again, I'm sorry for my mistake. I forgot to do this right after this. So y cannot be negative 8 and y cannot be negative 2. Now, I just got a lot of work to do. It's just slow and steady. Y times Y is Y squared. Y times 2 is 2Y. Y times Y is Y squared. Y times 8 is 8Y. Equals Y squared. I'm going to do the outer and the inner together. 8Y plus 2Y is 10Y plus 16. I'm going to erase this. Come on, need the space, I think. All right, on the left side, I'm going to clean it up. I have 2y squared plus 10y equals y squared plus 10y plus 16. I'm going to like to keep my y squareds positive, so I'm going to move everything to the left. So when I subtract y squared from 2y squared, that's going to leave me 1y squared. When I subtract 10y to move it over, it goes away. And when I move the 16 over, it becomes negative 16 equals 0. Now this is just a simple y plus 4, y minus 4. Difference of squares. So y is equal to plus or minus 4. Final answer. Now, remember, we always need to check this answer here with these restrictions. And if any of those match up, we have to list it as extraneous or non-solution. It's not a true solution. Okay? So, on this one, we're going to start off by saying the LCD is simply 5x. The restriction is x cannot be 0. So I'm going to multiply everything by 5x. 5x here, 5x here, 5x here. All right, on the first fraction, the 5s are going to cancel, leaving me x times x. On the second one, nothing cancels, so I got 3 times 5x, which is 15x. And this time, I'm distributing a 5x, so 9x 
times 5x is 45x squared plus 7 times 5 is 35x. Now, since I'd like to keep my x's, x squareds positive, I'm going to subtract these two and go this way. So that's going to give me 44x squared. 35x minus 15x is going to be plus 20x. And I have no constant, so that's equal to zero. Isn't it good when you see your teachers make mistakes? I think it should be. Because I made another mistake. The 5x cancels on this side. So all that's left is 9x plus 7. Sorry about that. So again, I do like to keep my x's positive, so I'm going to move Ashley. I'm going to move these this direction. So that's going to give me x squared, 15x minus 9x is 6x. And then when I move the 7 over, I get minus 7. Oh, that looks much better. So now I just need to set these two equal to 0 after I factor them. Two numbers that multiply give me 7. The differ by 6. I want more positives. And that gives me the answer x equals negative 7 and x equals positive 1. Sorry about that. And I check it against this. No extraneous answers. Okay, last few here. Last four. Number 21. My LCD is going to be the 2x times x plus 3. Immediately I come down here. x can't be 0. x cannot be negative 3. Over here, I need to multiply this one by 2x, x plus 3. And this one times 2x, x plus 3. Over here on the left side, the x plus 3s cancel, leaving me 2 times 2x. Over here, the 2x cancel, which leaves me x minus 6 times x plus 3. I have a little foiling to do. So 4x equals x squared minus 6x plus 3x is minus 3x minus 18. Last step is to subtract 4x, which gives me x squared minus 7x minus 18 equals 0. So I simply need two numbers that multiply to give me 9, 18, I'm sorry, 18 that differ by 2 which is 9 and 2. Different by 7. I'm getting ahead of myself. 9 and 2. I need more negatives than positives. So my answer is x is 9 and x is negative 2. Again, check it against those. No extraneous values. If you happen to look at the answer key, it says positive 2 instead of negative 2. It is negative 2. All right, a little bit to do here first. First off, I need to factor this to x plus 6, x minus 6, which is nice because that's what I have already, x plus 6, x minus 6. So that's simply going to be the LCD, just two things, x plus 6, x minus 6, which means my restrictions are can't be either one, 6 or negative 6. So I'm going to multiply everything by x plus 6, x minus 6 x plus 6, x minus 6, x plus 6, x minus 6. You just do it for each fraction. Over here, the x minus 6 is canceled, leaving me 1 times x plus 6. On the second fraction, the x plus 6 cancel, leaving me 1 times x minus 6. And this side, I'm not going to mess it up this time, everything cancels, leaving me 12. Well, over here, I get 6 minus 6 is 0. So that gives me 2x equals 12, divided by 2, x is 6. The problem is, that is extraneous. 
because X can't be 6. So it's extraneous, or you could say no solution. Twenty-three. Simple enough. This is x minus four x plus four. So the LCD is going to be just that, just like the last problem. And I'm going to write it small x plus four x minus four here. X plus four x minus four here. And on this side, don't forget, this is over one x plus four x minus 4 here. Now, on the first one, the x plus 4 is canceled, leaving me the 2 times the x minus 4. On the second one, everything cancels, leaving me just plus 1. Equals x plus 4 times x minus 4, but if you think about it, we already know what that is. x squared minus 16. So I distribute this 2, I get 2x minus 8 plus 1. Combine this, 2x minus 7 equals x squared minus 16. I'm going to subtract the 2x and get x squared minus 2x. I'm going to add 7, which means 7 minus 16 is negative 9. I lost my writing. Now, this is not factorable. There are no two numbers that multiply to give you 9 that differ by 2. 9 minus 1 is 8. 3 minus 3 is 0. Okay. So that means we got to go back to our old friend Pythagoras. So A is 1. B is negative 2. And C is negative 9. So X equals the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of b squared, remember there's always going to be a positive number, no matter what the calculator tells you, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a. So that gives me x equals positive 2, plus or minus, remember negative 2 squared is 4, calculator tells you it's negative, it's not. Negative 4 times negative 9 is plus 36 over 2. X equals 2 plus or minus square root of 40 over 2. Remember, square root of 40 breaks down to 4 and 10. So that means square root of 4 is 2. The root 10 stays behind and 2 on the bottom. Now, normally we say we can't cancel across the plus or minus sign, but the 2 can go into both, so we're good to go. Because technically it could be written like this. And therefore, you're good. So that means our answer is 1 plus or minus root 10. Don't you miss Pythagorean theorem? So much fun. All right, find the inverse. Okay, so right here, remember, we start off by saying this is y. Okay, then we switch the x and the y. So x equals 1 over y minus 2. Okay. All right, so we've switched them. Now, we're trying to get y by itself, so we need y up top. So we're gonna multiply by y minus two and y minus two, all right? That's gonna cancel. On this side, I'm gonna have to distribute the x, so I'm gonna get xy minus two x equals one, all right? Now, I want everything without a y to move, so I'm going to add 2x to both sides. So that's going to give me xy equals 2x plus 1. And then to get y by itself, I divide by x. So that gives me y equals 
2x plus 1 over x. Okay? On this one, I start by making that a y, then I switch them. x equals 1 over y plus 6. Multiply both sides by y plus 6. That cancels. I get xy plus 6x equals 1. Subtract the 6x. 1 minus 6x, or negative 6x plus 1, whatever you want to do. I want y by itself. So simply y equals 1 minus 6x over x. And that's it.